Caroline plus one. Let's try this again. Christ is risen. Hallelujah. <laughs> we'll get it. <laughs> Welcome everyone to, hmm? Yes, you got it wrong again, but we'll get it right. By the, literally, by the end of this service, we will have it down pat. <laughs> So welcome everyone to this special worship. Uh, I just want to make a couple of announcements uh, before we begin. Um, one, uh, because it's Easter Monday tomorrow, there will be no lection reflection, no Zoom lection reflection for those of you who engage in that, but we will start up again next Monday. Um, and just to let you know, um, a month, and a, a month in advance, that May 14th, although it's a really dreary day to even think about this, but May 14th is Christian Family Sunday and it's Mother's Day, um, but at one o'clock that day, if you have a mother and a motorcycle, bring them to the lower parking lot because we are having the <laughs> motorcycle blessing <laughs> at one o'clock that day in city center lower parking lot and at 3.30 up in Terrace. So if you know people who ride, just let them know. I saw a guy just scooch across on a motorcycle on my way here with no helmet and in the rain. So he needs to come to the blessing. <laughs> yeah. Figure this out. And, and if you did show up here at 7 a.m. for the sunrise service, I'm really sorry, but I, I told Rosemary that her can must uh, become a weather person because very rarely are they right, and he called it. He said there would be rain today, and well done. You were right. Was it the left elbow? or Oh, well, that's my right elbow. Was it the left elbow was hurting? You knew rain was coming? Every, pardon me? Every, no, it's not Ken's fault. It's not Ken's fault. He just, he just called it. And we welcome Caroline plus one today. Um, she was supposed to be due yesterday. <laughs> <coughs> so I'm going to try to keep the service as low-key as possible yes. <laughs> so that, you know, the only water breaking today is going to be outside. <laughs> yes. Okay? <laughs> Sounds good. <sighs> I also, um, I also want to uh, <coughs> say thank you. Oh. Some of you may know that uh, late Sunday night last week, my grandmother had a medical emergency and went into care, and Monday night she passed away. So I talk about her an awful lot, and I really wish today she was one of the ones rising. But she has risen in glory, so... This is that first Easter in this week and Good Friday, you know, it all just kind of flows together. So thank you for your prayers and um, well wishes and uh, I just give thanks that I had her for 97 years. Well, I didn't. She <laughs> was in the world for 97 years and eight months and for all of my life she was my grand. So um, I'm just very, very thankful today, even though I'm crying. And I'm thankful for the rain, because that is really good at hiding tears. Mm -hmm. oh, so, let's prepare our hearts <clears throat> and our minds for worship on this day of celebration. Mm, let's get this right here. There we go. He is risen. He, he is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, that wasn't part of my script, but that's okay. I invite you to breathe in this moment. Breathe in and allow yourself to rest inside the kind of love, the kind of power that can take darkness and turn it to light, that can take endings and turn them into beginnings, that can take death and turn it into new life. He is risen. He, he is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <clears throat> and now, 
before we transform this sanctuary, before we transform this symbol of execution into something beautiful, let's take a moment to acknowledge the territory and this piece of God's sacred creation upon which we are gathered. We encourage you, and happy Easter to you if you are viewing this service from home or away. Uh, we encourage you to take a moment to acknowledge the first people of your local area and the territory upon which you currently reside. We give thanks for the Heisla Nation, its people, and their traditional unceded territory, and we remember that as members of the wider community of Kitimat living out the call to heal and reconcile, we commit ourselves to seeking right, right relationship with our, our sisters, sisters and brothers and to look for and be the face of love in the Kitimat Valley and in the world. And if you feel like helping out, you're welcome to do so. If you brought flowers with you and you want to bring them forward to place in the cross, you're welcome to do that now.
please be seated. So a few days ago, we hid in the crowds that called for our teachers' execution. We, we gathered, gathered in the, the dust and the mud on top of a lonely hill. hill. We stood in front of a large stone door behind which darkness swallowed up all the light and love we thought we'd ever see and feel again. But, but we, we were wrong, wrong and, and God, God was right. right. That stone is rolled away Healing light and liberating love are still wild and free in the world. Christ, Christ is risen. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Hallelujah. Light has overcome darkness. Love has overcome fear. Life has overwhelmed death. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus Christ is Easter, there, there would, would be, be no, no Christmas. Christmas. Without endings, there, there would, would be, be no beginnings. beginnings. Without winter, there, there would, would be, be no spring. spring. Risen One, we are here because you call us together in love to learn about love, to practice love, to be loved and to love. We are here because your incomprehensible story of death defied and betrayal reconciled still captures the imagination, still causes us to stop and wonder at the audacity of life, the radical depth and breadth of love, its defiance, its resilience, its courage. 
the way life and love forever and always lean into the light, trusts in the light, shines for the light. Open us, we weary travelers, to your defiant, resilient, laughing presence this morning. May the power of your resurrection wipe away tears and fears alike and awaken the presence of the risen Christ within each and every one of us. May it awaken our childlike wonder, our yearning for peace-filled joy and the ability to change our corner of the world for the better and for always. And the people say, Amen. Amen. prayer for healing and renewal is adapted from uh, Ted Loder's Gorillas of Grace. And if you don't have it, it's a beautiful, beautiful book. We pray. Holy risen Christ, source of such amazing surprises as put a catch in our breath and wings on our heart. We praise you for this joy. Too great for words, but not for tears and songs and sharing. For, for this mercy that blots out our betrayals and bids us begin again to limp on, to hop, skip, and jump on, to mend what is broken in and around us and to forgive the breakers. For this, for this yes. yes. To, to life and, and laughter, laughter, to love and lovers, to our unwinding selves, to our unwounded, unwounding selves. For this kingdom, unleashed in us and we in it forever, and, and no, no dead, dead ends to growing, to, to choices, to, to chances, to, to calls to, to be just. just. No dead ends to living, to making peace, to dreaming dreams, to being glad of heart. For, For this, this resurrection madness, which is wider than us, and, and in, in which we see how great you are, how full of grace, how full of love, how full of life. Hallelujah and amen. Shine. 
passing of the peace of Christ, uh, we have adapted um, from uh, Neil Douglas Klotz. It's uh, Blessings of the Cosmos, Wisdom of the Heart from the Aramaic Words of Christ. On the night before Jesus was betrayed, he offered words of peace, and he described his peace as, uh, and, and he passed this sacred peace to his followers. It was the kind of peace that they would need to carry them through the next few days and beyond. It was the peace that they were to offer one another and to the world on his behalf. So before we offer Christ's peace to one another, and for those of you who are with us um, visiting, uh, we don't get up and walk around. Ever since COVID, we're still in the midst of waving nicely at each other and and, and saying, you know, peace to you. <laughs> so, so we will remain in our seats, but uh, we will move around in our hearts. Says Jesus, peace. The remembrance of the potential of the universe before the holy oneness created it. The harmony of opposites the awareness of the void. I recreate this original peace in you it, with my presence. I release this peace by my constant inner forgiveness and letting go. I surround you with this peace and you feel a fire of love kindled in your hearts. The thing world, the thing world, the universal, the universe of levels, planes, articles, and separation cannot give peace the way I do. Diversity gives the gift of forms fulfilling their purpose, then passing away, a peace of separation. I give peace with the awareness of the whole story of sacred unity, an ongoing creation moving ahead of, with, and behind us like a caravan. Let your heart beat carry this remembrance when you feel this peace. The center of your passion can never be forced or limited, neither inflated nor deflated. You cannot be carried away by fear nor hemmed in by grief. You are always coming to standing at the beginning, reverberating peace around you without limit. This is the peace that we are shown how to pass in his command to love one another as he loved, as Christ loves us. May the peace of Christ be with you all. And, and also, also with, with you. you. <laughs> and to you folks at home, peace to you. Our first reading today can be found in the Christian Testaments book of the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 10, 
verses 34 to 43. Let our hearts be open as we listen for God's wisdom. Then Peter began to speak to them. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears God and does what is right is acceptable to God. You know the message God sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. God is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. How Jesus went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God.
Our second reading on this beautiful day comes from the Christian Testaments Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 28, verses 1 to 10. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of God descending from heaven came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. Its appearance was like lightning and its clothing white as snow. For fear of the angel, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised, and he said, Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell the disciples, Jesus has been raised from the dead, and indeed he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came to him, took hold of his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. For the word of God. Thanks Thanks be be to God. Let's pray. Holy One, may the words of my mouth, may the thoughts of all of our hearts be acceptable to you. May they bring you glory. Amen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. (laughs) Told you you'd get it towards the end of the service. This is it. This is the day. This is the thing that everyone was talking about, this great mystery. The women went there, and he was gone. The angels, they said, no way. Yes, angels, and his shrouds, no way. Yahweh. (laughs) Get it? (laughs) Oh, man. (sighs) Hmm? It's a very tough crowd, Ken. (laughs) Did you hear? His body was just gone. Well, some think they paid off the soldiers and took his body away. No. Some think his soldiers drugged the water, maybe their wine. They were out cold when they stole him away. No. Some say the women saw him, (laughs) but they're women, prone to fits of hysteria. They haven't hardly slept since, you know, that day, that that horrible day. They're delusional. They're seeing what they want to see. I mean, who can believe a group of women? But he's not there anymore. Ah, who knows? Maybe we'll never know. The absurdity of the whole thing. We look back from the comfort of our 21st century perch. Maybe we're hearing this story for the first time, but more than likely, we've heard this story for 10 times, 20 times, 50 times. Who knows how many times we've heard this story? We knew last week when he entered Jerusalem waving our branches and singing, Hey, Zana, ho, Zana, 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 Hey, Zana, ho. We knew. We knew that what was coming, we knew the upper room and the new commandment. You know the new commandment. You were there when he transformed the Passover meal forever into something that, that we do, something that the people who follow the new way do. The new commandment, Love one another as I have loved you. People will know you're my people if you love one another. 
We knew even after leaving the upper room together on Thursday night that some of us would fall asleep. We knew we'd let our, light, let our guard down. We knew about the part where he'd been betrayed with a kiss and led off by the authorities to face his accusers. We, we already knew, you know, the denials that most of his friends would abandon him. We already knew about the violence done to him and the ultimate silence of that dark day. But you know, we, we don't really have to talk about that now until next year. <laughs> so hey, cheer up. We made it through the utter downer that is Holy Week. It's time to partay. We can relive the story or the bits of the story that we like and have time for, the stomach and the patience for, because this is it. This is the moment that makes Christmas possible. If you have debt still from Christmas, blame Easter. The mystery of our understanding of the holy. Jesus lived, Jesus died, Christ rose and lives again. You know, people saw him a few days later. They would eat with him. They would touch him. His words would continue to teach them. His actions continue to show them, to show us how to keep on loving, keep on living, even after death, in spite of death, to spite death. They learned, we are being taught, that death, that betrayal and denial, that acts of injustice and inhumanity do not have the last word or the lasting word. If only Fox News would get that message. (laughs) Are you serious? You saw him. You talked to him? Well, not that I don't believe you, but I think I need to see for myself. The whole scene in that garden of the tomb is so amazing. In their desolation, their shock and sadness, their emotional exhaustion, their anger and disappointment over everything leading up to this moment, they see a being in dazzling, radiant robes, amazing in and of itself, since hardly anything was clean or stayed clean in their time. I mean, they didn't have Tide Pods back then. And the first thing that this divine being says to them What's the first thing the angels always say to humans? Do not be afraid, fear not. Yeah. And then they do as God's messenger says, and they head out to find the other disciples, the scattered and hiding disciples, hiding just in case the Romans and the religious authorities get it into their heads that maybe cutting off the head of the snake isn't going to be enough. But then they actually run into Jesus. And unlike the Gospel of John, where Jesus tells Mary, don't hold on to me, don't touch me, because I'm not quite ready yet. You know, go on ahead. In this Gospel, in Matthew's story, the women fall to their knees and take hold of his feet, praising God for this moment. And then the second thing Jesus says after, hey, how's it going, greetings, do not be afraid. Which Seems funny because if they were afraid, they would, uh, would they have been hugging his feet? But, but maybe they were afraid he would disappear again. They were afraid he wasn't real, and they were holding on to him, and they were like, we are not letting you go ever, ever again. We let you wander off onto the mountainside and into that garden with those other disciples and Look what they did. If you were with us, we'd have been awake. We'd have been brewing coffee. We never would have let you go. They would be like little kids holding his legs being dragged around as he tried to walk. We are not letting you go ever again. Maybe they were thinking, oh God, he's here. Don't let the soldiers, those who turned him over to the Romans, see him. We don't want him to get caught again. So even though they were ecstatic to find him alive, 
The wounds he sustained only a few days before healed, they were likely terrified to lose him again. That's my feeling anyway. And so he says to them, don't be afraid. Jesus, did you see what they did to you? Come on. You can't be caught again. We have reason to be afraid. But that's it. He wasn't afraid. He'd been through the worst humanity has to offer to humanity, betrayal, denial, abandonment, being maligned and misrepresented, being lied to, being lied about, being abused verbally, mentally, emotionally, physically, trauma on all levels of his being by friends and foe alike. And he's there with these women whose hearts are broken just moments before and in their love are terrified for him all over again, even as they are relieved in their shock to see him. Don't be afraid. Go and tell the others. I will see them. They will see me in Galilee. Hmm. You know, <clears throat> we church folk seem to be in one camp or the other. Maybe it's not just church folk, but some of us like to move from party to celebration, metaphorically from Palm Sunday cheering and go, Jesus, go, to, to Easter's Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Okay, we somehow, there was a little bit of a gap. You forgot. Let me bring you back. Christ is risen. Risen. How? There we go. Now we're back on it. And, and, and we want to visit, we don't want to visit the upper room or be caught anywhere near Good Friday because those days are too much of a downer. And really life real life is already too miserable. Why be reminded about how horrible people can be to people? If I want... Uh, to be feeling crappy, I just have to turn on the news, right? Right. So, Holy Week, no, not going to do it. Party to party. Party to party. That's what I want. Party to party. We don't want to see it. We don't have to deal with, have to admit to the broken places in the world, in our lives, in our hearts, too much. So why engage the difficult parts of the story, right? And then there are the folk, church folk included, who cannot seem to get beyond Good Friday. Every day is God's Friday. There, there they are at the foot of the cross. There we are at the foot of the cross in tears. They're at the foot of the tomb, exhausted and puffy-eyed. They're feeling ashamed and guilty and hiding away somewhere in darkness, caught up in what they did or didn't do, having missed the part about being forgiven. Somehow to be a faithful follower of Jesus means denying life's joy-filled abundance. There's those kind of Christians, too. I remember actually being told once in an evaluation, it was a sort of an evaluation, that my services were just too joyful. <laughs> what do you do with that? <laughs> I don't know. Okay, everybody be sad. Apparently, church is supposed to be somber affair. We are supposed to be reminded of our failings and misguided actions all the time, you miserable worms. <sighs> sure, if we were a Good Friday people, but we're not called to be Good Friday people. We're called to be Easter people. It's like they are there not only at the foot of the cross denying themselves of any of life pleasures, it's, it's as if Easter doesn't happen at all. They're up there on the cross beside Jesus, maybe even in place of Jesus, because, well, Jesus isn't there anymore. And we want to say to those folks, can you come down off the cross, because Jesus needs the wood. Ideally, Ideally, we are people that can walk through the whole story. The bad, the ugly, the good. We are not a Good Friday people every day. But we are some days. Some days life hits us sideways and we fall to our knees and we are Good Friday people. But we have to remember Good Friday is not the day. We are Easter people, and after we go through Good Friday, we rise. We are ultimately an Easter people. We rise with the Christ on Easter Sunday morning. That's what they used to do with the early converts to Christianity. You didn't just do a membership class or whatever, or confirmation class. You were a student 
for a full year. And then when Lent came along, the season of Lent where you give up chocolate and whatever else, sorry Liz, um, it was a slow process of letting oneself go, pieces that got in the way of our peace. And then we'd walk through the whole of Holy Week together as students, we'd be utterly lost on Good Friday together, we'd be silent and fasting on Holy Saturday, and then on Sunday morning we would rise to new life in Christ. We'd be given new shining white robes, we'd be baptized and brought in as new members of Christ's body. That's how they used to do it. Our old lives would be washed away. We'd rise with Christ. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Okay, we'll give you that part. We'd rise with Christ. We would rise within Christ. Christ would live within us. Christ would live through us starting today. And every year we live the seasons, the highs, the lows, the in-betweens of the life of the fo- uh, as a follower of the new way. Loving God, loving our neighbors, praying for our enemies, loving ourselves so that we can love our neighbors. And if we hadn't yet learned to love ourselves well enough to love our neighbors, we would spend the year loving others, including ourselves, as Jesus loves us. And then we go through it all over again. Palm Sunday's party, Monday Thursday's intimate meal and washing and new commandment, Good Friday's utter loss, only to rise again with and within Christ on Sunday morning to be reminded that although in life we will experience our own Good Friday and Good Fridays, life and love will always and forever have the last words, which begins with, do not be afraid. Now go and tell everyone else that love wins. Life wins. Be a witness to both the cross and to the empty tomb. Life and love in defiance of Good Friday. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Christ is risen in us. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. We rise in Christ, with Christ, for Christ. We rise indeed. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. Amen.
Thank you. I like that little teeny tea. <laughs> Folks, we bring our gifts to this extraordinary table. We remember all the times that we've been helped to rise again after loss, after grief, rage, after confusion, after hard lessons learned. We remember the calm that came after the storms in our lives, the laughter after tears, the answers to questions, the strength after weakness. And we breathe in every moment a stone has been rolled away from the tombs in which we have been placed, in which we hid ourselves. And we rejoice in gratitude. We give in gratitude. We give trusting in new beginnings and the audacity of life. So considering all of our blessings, what gifts are you willing to and able to offer in support of the many ministry initiatives in this community of faith? How might you support your wider community and the least and the most vulnerable amongst us? How might you lift others up and shine light into the world? And in our gratitude, as we sign our checks and press send on our e-transfers, as we decide where we feel called to volunteer our time and share our prayers, may we do so with the certainty that our generosity is making a positive difference in the world. Through our churches, through our nonprofit societies, our United Church Mission and Service Fund, and the Indigenous Healing Fund. Roll away the stones. Thanks be to God. Christ is risen. He is, he is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Hallelujah. and loving God, thank you. If the only prayer we have left to say is thank you, it is enough. Thank you for the gifts we receive from the earth and from the people we share life with and for the gifts that we are able to contribute for the well-being of others, for the healing of creation. Bless what and how we give so that it and we may make a positive difference in your world. And the people say, Amen. 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 Please be seated. So as we gather around this table, <clears throat> we are reminded that this table doesn't belong to any one person or any one church. This table belongs to Christ. Love is the host, and we are the guests invited to the party. All who seek nourishment, body and soul, are welcome here. A homeowner in a parable once shared by Jesus said, Go into the streets and the lanes. Bring, Bring in, the, in poor, the poor, the blind, blind and, and the, the lame. lame. Go into the roads and the alleyways. Compel, Compel people to, to come, come in. That my house be filled. And, and my, my feast, feast may be complete. complete. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> may love's source be with us. Love, love is here, here among us. us. Let us open our hearts to God. We open them to God and one another. Let us give thanks to God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Holy One, risen love, 
We give thanks for the creative, animating force, the cosmic consciousness which dreamed into being the universe and fashioned the earth and all that call it home and then named it and claimed it all as good. We give thanks for the life-giving, revolving, evolving in, through, and beyond time, energy, the potential hidden in the smallest of particles and the grandest of visions. We give thanks for the ebb and the flow, the sunrise and sunset, the changing seasons, the transformational cycle of birth, death, and rebirth for endings that are new beginnings. We give thanks for love's source, which was present in a room one night as a group of friends gathered with their teacher to share a traditional Passover meal, an act that served to remind them of who they were as a people, where they came from and where they were going. We give thanks for this diverse community of women and men made up of dreamers and practical folk, risk-takers and reasoned voices, the doubting and assured, healed and healers, students and teachers, all present in an upper room because there was something about their teacher, their rabbi, about the way he lived and loved, something in the words he spoke, the silence he kept, something in his compassion and his defiance, in his look and his touch that drew them together. Was it his hunger for equitable and merciful justice, his hunger for meaning and purpose, his hunger for soul deep peace, a yearning for change, for wisdom, for healing? Was it, was it his unconditional welcome, his gentleness, his fire? Was it the way he was able to find what is sacred and increase what is holy in every heart and every place and moment? Whatever brought them together, we give thanks for their new community, for their willingness to step beyond cultural expectations, beyond prejudices, beyond self-doubt and fear and attempts to, and attempt to live and love their way into a new reality, learning and growing, ever evolving, imperfect but authentic, broken yet whole. We are here today because of this courageous soul, because of the commitment of his followers, because even as they were broken open and broken apart, they too were reborn, renewed in the light of forgiveness and grace. We are here because of an empty tomb, because of an upper room, because of unquenchable love and a descending dove. We are here knowing what it feels like to be born for the first time and to start over and to start again with the angels and all of the cosmos, we are here and we sing our gratitude for new life, fresh starts, second chances, for healing and reconciliation, for forgiveness and grace. see this 20th century table and we look back from the 21st century to partake of a simple first century meal, we see there is no gold, no fancy tablecloths, just clay jugs and clay cups filled with a common drink laid upon a coarse woven cloth. We see a light worker take a simple loaf of unleavened bread, offer word of thanks, and then break it as his body and his heart would be broken. And we hear his words, take, take eat, eat, remember. remember. Yeah. 
And we watch as he takes a jug of wine and pours it out. As his life, his spirit would be poured out. And we hear his words, take, take drink, drink, remember. Remembering your boundless love for your creation, for all of your people, we offer you our praise, holy love, as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has, has died. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ, Christ is, is here, here and, and now. now. Sacred mystery, send the fire of your Holy Spirit upon us, upon these simple gifts, that we may know the Christ in the breaking, pouring, and sharing. Send your spirit like a rushing wind so that in word and action we may be channels of your peace with compassionate justice in the world. Roll the stones from our hearts so we may know and show love without condition. And let us pray now for and with those with whom you would have us share this sacred meal. Holy One, each of us comes with prayers for your world. In silence we lift them to you. <clears throat> We come with prayers for our country and our countries of origin. We pray for your church, your temples, your synagogues, for we pray for all places, all sacred centers. We pray for our friends and for our families. We pray for ourselves. All this we ask, Holy One. All this we ask and the prayers that are too deep for words. We pray in the name of the risen one who taught us how to pray the prayer we say now in the language of our comfort. Our Father, Father who, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be your name. Your thy kingdom, kingdom come, come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Come, for all things are now ready.
bread for the journey. Bread for the journey. Bread for the journey. Bread for the journey. <laughs> Bread for the journey. for the journey. A cup of blessing poured out for you. Let's join in our prayer after communion. God of, God love, of love, may, may your, your gifts, gifts of love, love renew us. us. Stones, Stones rolled away, away from our from hearts. Our hearts. May, we may we be filled, filled with, with such gratitude for your presence in the world. And, and we, we seek to do your will in the world. Spread, spread your love, your, your light in, in this world. world. May, may we welcome strangers in your in name. Your name. Feed the people, body and soul, in your name. Speak the truth to power in your name. Heal and comfort in your name. Live lives of joy in your name. This we pray. Amen. I know you've just got comfortable, but folks, please rise as you are able for the affirmation of faith. <coughs> We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect in creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope, in life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us, we are not alone, Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen.
God of Easter, Christ of new beginnings, spirit of new growth, new direction, send us into your world held in your light so that we are able to live into love out loud, trust fully the transforming power of the resurrection so that we, with all of creation, may be one with the living Christ now and always. Amen. Amen. behalf of the, all of us. We've been with you in prayer all week. We continue to be in prayer with you. We send all of our love and condolences to you this day. And we know Granny is <laughs> in heaven watching us today. Yes. Oh, no, she loves your haircut. It's lovely. So on behalf of the congregation, You're welcome. There is a card somewhere. Oh, okay. Somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> 